Hello and welcome to lecture 6 in thermochemistry. Today we're going to look at formation enthalpies and bond enthalpies. Of course these are the knowledge outcomes that uh, are prescribed by Alberta Learning. Hopefully you're keeping track of your progress in mastering this material. Um, by now we should be familiar with the nature of a formation reaction. We would have dealt with it in grade 10 and also uh, grade 11 chemistry 20. A formation reaction, also known as a synthesis reaction, is defined as a chemical reaction that creates a compound from its elements in their standard state. And it's that last piece that people often forget as part of the definition, that the reactants in a formation reaction are elements in their standard state. <clears throat> the data book that you've been supplied with in this course lists many common formation reactions together with their enthalpy. And here's a small s snippet from that table. So for example, here we have aluminum oxide. Its formation from its elements in their standard state releases 1,675.7 kilojoules for every mole of aluminum oxide produced. And here's what the thermochemical equation looks like. Um, if you look at the table, you'll notice most, forma most formation reactions have a negative delta H value. They're exothermic in nature. And this introduces to the concept of thermal stability. We're going to take a minute just to talk about thermal stability before we go on to formation enthalpies um, more generally. By definition, uh, thermal stability is a measure of a compound's resistance to decomposition, how much energy it requires to decompose a substance back into its elements. The more energy required to decompose a substance, uh, the greater its thermal stability. And we can determine thermal stability from an examination of the standard formations enthalpy table that you've been supplied. For example, we've already looked at the formation of aluminum oxide. The formation of aluminum oxide releases 1675.7 kilojoules for every mole of aluminum oxide formed. Its decomposition would be the reverse reaction, uh, which would look like this. So, uh, in English then, the decomposition of a mole of aluminum oxide requires the input of 1675.7 kilojoules of energy, which is quite a lot of energy, making aluminum oxide um, relatively thermally stable. Uh, if we draw a comparison between that and water then, um, the decomposition of water only requires the input of 285.8 kilojoules of energy making the aluminum oxide much more thermally stable than, um, than water. Um, coming back to formation enthalpies then, um, formation enthalpies um, are, are sort of a, 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 an application of Hess's law. In fact, uh, they're often called long form Hess's law. Um, it's a very rapid method of determining enthalpy change for an unknown uh, equation. Um, and to help you with this work, we've tabulated formation enthalpies, of course, in our data booklet. Uh, and these enthalpies are all determined under SATP conditions, <clears throat> which is often forgotten in the question, but um, um, you should recognize that um, in the back of your mind, when you're doing this work, you're dealing at SATP conditions. So again, here's the same snippet of the table we've seen previously. Um, and the underlying assumption in formation enthalpies work is that reactants um, are decomposed when they go through any form of chemical reaction and products are formed. Um, so reactants are taken down to their elements in their standard state and products are built up from those same elements. Um, it's a bit of a fiction, but the mathematics works quite nicely in terms of determining um, enthalpy change for, for any given chemical reaction. And then what we do is we add the enthalpy change associated with the products, because if you think about it, the products are actually being formed, and we subtract the enthalpy change associated with the uh, formation of the reactants since they are getting um, being decomposed. And that gives us the overall enthalpy change. Mathematically, the equation is kind of ugly. It looks like this. But ultimately, what we're doing is we're adding in the formation enthalpies for the products, because the products are being formed. And we're subtracting the formation enthalpies for the reactants, because the reactants are being decomposed. Uh, conceptually, 
Um, that's what we. That, that's the, 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 the sort of the background theory behind formation enthalpies. And again, the equation's ugly, but uh, formation enthalpy problems are relatively straightforward. Here's an example. Predict the standard enthalpy change for the following reaction. And on the diploma, on unit finals, you always know when you're dealing with formation enthalpy, enthalpy problem because you're not giving any information. You're not giving a change in temperature. Of course, change in temperature invites you to apply calorimetry work. You're not giving a system of equations. That invites you to apply Hess's law. Here you're just given an equation, or sometimes even just the description of an equation, and you're asked to determine the enthalpy for the reaction. And you'll see I'm applying color coding because it's easier to track, in my opinion, the, the, the applicable enthalpies to each of the species. So in this equation, we have one product that's being formed and two reactants that are being decomposed. And again, that's the theoretical basis for formation enthalpies. So to solve this problem, we add the formation enthalpy associated with the product, which is the ammonium nitrate, and we subtract the formation enthalpies associated with the reactants, which is the ammonia and the hydrogen nitrate. And of course, all these formation enthalpies are listed in our data booklet. So I'm sort of laying out the mathematics for you here. Ultimately, Let's substitute in our values. So the red, that's our, we're adding in the formation enthalpy for the product for the ammonium nitrate, the NH4NO3. And then we're subtracting the formation enthalpy for the one mole of the ammonia in green and one mole of the hydrogen nitrate in, um, in blue. In the end, the, when we do the math, the overall Reaction enthalpy change is negative 145.6 kilojoules. And we would report that as the enthalpy change for the reaction is negative 145.6 kilojoules. And that would be placed up here to complete the thermochemical equation, just like this. Um, here's a tougher example because um, we're not even given an equation. We're just given a description of an equation, and we have to build the equation. So we're talking about the reaction of methane gas with steam to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So that looks like this. And you'll see I've gone straight to the balanced equation. Here's our methane, here's our steam, here are our products, carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. Of course, the products are being formed, so we add in their enthalpies, and the reactants are being decomposed, so we subtract out their enthalpies. And mathematically, I, I thought I'd show you just how sort of ugly the equation can look. Ultimately, though, we're adding in the enthalpy of formation for the carbon dioxide, up for one mole of it, because one mole of it's being formed. We're adding in the enthalpy change for the formation of what, four moles of hydrogen gas, because four moles are being um, formed. And we're subtracting out the enthalpy change for the formation of methane, because it's not being formed, it's being decomposed. Likewise, two moles of water, uh, two moles of steam are being decomposed. Um, I'm going to refer you to the, the purple, to the, the formation of the hydrogen. You'll notice its enthalpy change is zero. And again, this comes back to our definition from a formation reaction. Formation reaction is when a compound is formed from its elements in their standard state. Well, this hydrogen is an element in its standard state. So, of course, it's going to have zero enthalpy change because it's not going through any chemistry in being formed. It, um, uh, it's like asking um, how much energy is released when hydrogen gas is converted into hydrogen gas. Well, the answer is zero. And this holds true for all elements in their standard state. Um, their enthalpy of formation is zero. Some textbooks don't even show these terms, but I wanted to show that to explain it. Coming back to the overall reaction then, the overall reaction has an enthalpy change of positive 164.7 kilojoules of energy. Positive, therefore, endothermic. Bond enthalpies. Uh, your textbook uh, touches on bond enthalpies. I think most textbooks deal with it in a single page. And the topic is, is, topic is expanded quite broadly at the university level, but um, we simply touch on it at this point in time. <laughs> Bond enthalpies then are defined to mean the input of energy required to break one mole of the bond under study. They're also referred to as bond energy. Of course.
course, bond breaking requires an input of energy, so bond enthalpies are always endothermic. They always have a positive delta H value. And again, they're given a one-page treatment in your textbook, so we'll be brief. Uh, typically, bond enthalpies are tabulated under standard conditions, uh, just the same way that formation enthalpies are tabulated. And here I'm showing you two tables. Uh, neither of these are available in either your textbook or your data booklet, but um, we'll do one straightforward enough example of bond enthalpies and then close up the lecture. Um, so, for example, the table on the left, a, a single hydrogen to hydrogen bond requires the input of 436 kilojoules to break one mole of those bonds. And the table on the right deals with um, uh, double and triple bonds. Um, now, bond enthalpies is similar than to formation enthalpies. In formation enthalpies, we assume that reactants are broken down to their elements and that products are built or constructed from their elements in their standard state. In bond enthalpies, we assume that reactants are broken down to free atoms and that products are built up from those free atoms. So we break each and every bond in the reactants in bond enthalpies and we form each and every bond in the products. And mathematically that looks like this. And here's an interesting graph, and, and quite often on diploma, you, you, you're given a graph like this. Here we have a reaction between methane and oxygen. So we're burning methane. And you'll see that the graph goes up, energy is being put in to break each and every one of those bonds present in those reactants. So you're breaking one, two, three, four carbon to hydrogen bonds, and you're breaking one, two oxygen to oxygen double bonds. So the reactants are broken down to their atomic form free is to free atoms and of course enthalpy is increasing because we have to put energy into the system to break those bonds and then products are formed so you see carbon dioxide is formed which represents two carbon to oxygen bonds and two water molecules are formed representing four hydrogen to oxygen bonds enthalpy comes down because of course bond formation releases energy to its surroundings um, and again, here's the descriptor of it. Four moles of hydrogen carbon single bonds are broken in the reactants, as well as two moles of oxygen to oxygen double bonds. Here, two moles of carbon to oxygen bonds are being formed, as well as four moles of hydrogen to oxygen bonds. And we would calculate the reaction enthalpy then by adding in the enthalpies of the bonds being formed and subtracting the enthalpy of the bonds being broken. And again, I recovered these enthalpy values from the table I showed you on the previous page. That's where you would go to. You'd go to a table of that sort to recover these bond enthalpies. In the end, the enthalpy change for the overall reaction is negative 802 kilojoules. So that concludes uh, my lecture on um, thermal stability formation enthalpies and bond enthalpies. Hopefully you found that of some value. Oh, and there's the thermochemical equation. We're reporting our enthalpy change for the reaction. I'll refer you to your um, uh, homework that would be assigned by your teacher in this area, and we'll see you again next time when we talk about, um, I believe it's collision theory. Thank you.